In today's video, I went to a small island in the middle of the Yellow River. I also climbed up to the Great Wall on the cliff of the plateau by the river. It might contradict with your impression of the Great Wall of China. Right next to the Great Wall, there is a village evolving from a garrison 600 years ago. It was part of the defense system. This is the place where Shanxi people migrated to Mongolia steppe to start their business in the 17th century. It's where the story of Shanxi merchants started. in the middle of the Yellow River. To its north, which is at my back, is the Dringar Banner of Inner Mongolia. To its south is Hechi County of Shanxi Province. At the back of the temple is the Yellow River. Across the river is the Jingar Banner of Inner Mongolia. There is a small pavilion in the temple. Although the island is covered with dense forest, it has a network of trails. This piece of land seems like where the local islanders grow food and vegetables. Speaking of local islanders, I didn't see any. Instead, there were abandoned houses everywhere. No nothing. Looks like an abandoned island.
a vegetable field attracted my attention. There must be people living in the house nearby. Otherwise, who took care of those vegetables? The house is made from a round earth, and when I touch it, some parts would fall. I assume this was a lighthouse, but I'm not sure. On the side of the main road of the island, there is a Mongolian yurt. I'm not very surprised to see that. Let's look at the map. The black lines are the borders of Inner Mongolia and other provinces of China, which was pretty much the border between the Mongols and the Ming Dynasty during the 14th to 17th century. The blue line is the Yellow River. The section of the Yellow River between the two sections of the black lines is also the border. The Nyanyang Tan Island is in the middle of the Yellow River on the border. During Ming Dynasty, in winter, when the Yellow River was frozen, the Mongols would come to this island and use it as a base to further attack the Han territory. What did the Ming Dynasty do to deal with the threat from the north? They built the Great Wall. We are here right now in the place where the Yellow River meets the Great Wall. From the Mongolian Yurt, the southern bank of the Yellow River, which is a plateau, looks not far away. Along the cliff of the plateau is the Great Wall built in the Ming Dynasty. The Beacon Tower is visible from far away. That's my next stop. For that, I had to take a boat back to the southern bank of the river. There is a stairway leading all the way up to the top of the plateau. I'm going to check that out. A gate is in the middle of the stairway. It seems like it was a scenic area and the stairway was built for that. But for some reason, it has been abandoned. Passing the shrub in the middle of the steps, I went up to the gate and found out it's not locked. Here we are. I've reached the top of the stairway. This section reminds me of the hiking of Mount Taishan. Another gate inside, but enough room for me to enter. Ta-ta! The entire island is in the view. This is the Mongolian yurt. This is the dock located at the southern bank of the river. This is roughly where the temple is, although I can't see it clearly from this angle. Okay, I have climbed up the mountain, and let's go to the beacon tower now. Let's go. Just so you know, this is the Great Wall. Another angle. This, this, and this. They are parts of the Great Wall. It might contradict with your impression of the Great Wall of China, which is like the Jingshanling Great Wall I took you to visit before. You might think the Great Wall is at least built with bricks. And on the Great Wall, there are many watchtowers. But in fact, when the Ming Dynasty built the Great Wall in the 14th century, they built it with rammed earth and there were no hollow watchtower. 
in the 16th century, after Mongols raided towns near Beijing several times, a general named Qi Jiguang was called up to strengthen the defense of Beijing. He fortified the section of the Great Wall near Beijing with bricks. It was also him who invented Hello Watchtower and many other structures on the Great Wall. After that, some other sections of the Great Wall were also fortified, but some still remain the original status. This beacon tower is very special. It has an outer wall. I guess the outer wall was built to protect the beacon tower, but I'm not sure. I'm not an expert of the Great Wall. This is the entrance of the beacon tower. Following the steps, I went to the top of the beacon tower. Another unforgettable birthday. The Great Wall and the Yellow River, two symbols of Chinese civilization, meet each other here. Across the cornfield, there is a village. The wall of the village is made of rammed earth, the same as the Great Wall. This was a garrison. During the Ming Dynasty, along the Great Wall, there were many garrisons like this one. Soldiers were stationed inside. Another place to find the ruins of garrison is on the top of the Yungang Grottoes. I've taken you to the Grottoes, but I didn't tell you about the garrison on the top of the cliff. Nobody lives there anymore. But there are still villagers living in this one. They are the descendants of the soldiers stationed in the garrison in the Ming Dynasty. Today, along the Great War region, many villages could trace their roots to garrisons in the Ming Dynasty, but it's almost impossible to find the physical earthen walls from the Ming Dynasty. Speaking of the garrisons and the large army stationed along the Great War, they provided a business opportunity to merchants in Shanxi. Not able to deliver enough food and supplies to the army stationed along the Great Wall, the imperial court encouraged private merchants to do that. In exchange, it issued to those merchants license of salt business, which was monopolized by the imperial court and had a high profit margin. By providing supplies to the army along the Great Wall, the Shanxi merchants entered the profitable salt business. And that was only the beginning. In late Ming Dynasty, a nomadic people in northeastern China named the Manchu thrived. Feeling threatened, the Ming Imperial Court imposed embargo on Manchu people. Shanxi merchants perceived an illegal business opportunity, which was to smuggle goods to Manchu people. Their fortune kept growing during this period. In the 17th century, when Manchu people established the Qing Dynasty, the last dynasty of China, they offered the Shanxi merchants exclusive license to do business in Mongolia, which was part of the Qing Dynasty. Business opportunities attracted immigrants from Shanxi. It resulted in one of the biggest migrations in Chinese history. A dock nine kilometers away witnessed this history. This place used to be a ferry. People used to come here, take the ferry across the river, and go to Inner Mongolia. A huge flood in 2019 destroyed this dock. This video was filmed in the summer of 2020, and they were rebuilding the dock. Actually, there were different places along the Great War region for the immigrants to go to Mongolia. The dock here was one of them due to its special location. This place is very special in geography. It's the intersection of three provinces. I'm standing in Shanxi province. Across the river, on my right hand side, is Shanxi province. 
across the river on my left hand side is Inland Mongolia. Shanxi merchants opened up shops in Mongolia. From Mongolia, they even sold products to Far East and Moscow. The Great Tea Road had the sweat of Shanxi merchants. The merchants and even their clerks and workers made a considerable amount of fortune. Like the gold rush in the U.S., more and more people in Shanxi left home and went to Mongolia instead. In contrast to Western people who are used to seeking opportunities in new lands, Chinese people usually are reluctant to leave native land. In most cases, the reason for migration was pressure of survive. Shanxi province is lack of arable land. Famines forced farmers to seek opportunities elsewhere, but leaving home was difficult. There is a well-known folk song about a wife sending off her husband for Mongolian step. 哥哥，你走西口，小妹妹，我实在难留。手拉着那哥哥的手，送歌送到大门口，紧紧地拉着哥哥的袖，汪汪的泪水独立。只恨妹妹，我不能跟你一起走，只怕你哥哥早回家门口。Those immigrants not only changed their own life, but also changed the Inland Mongolia, which for thousands of years were home to nomadic tribes. After Shanxi immigrants settled in this land, cities started to form in the steppe. Starting from a worker or a clerk, many of those immigrants worked their way up or started their own business. The Shanxi merchants accumulated great amount of fortune and later on started banking business. China's Wall Street in the 18th century was in Shanxi. Stay tuned of my videos about Shanxi merchants. At the end of this video, I'll take you for a walk in the small town named Hechu. Not far away from the dock, I found some ancient wall and a temple. This is the second floor of the temple. A section of the ancient wall is right outside this temple. There is a huge crack in the wall. I thought it was the ancient city wall until I read this. This temple was actually a watchtower, and the wall outside is the Great Wall. Surprise! Now look at this temple again. It really is the same style as the watchtowers in Jinshanling Great Wall. It is even bigger than them. Look at the wall, rammed earth inside, bricks outside. As I have explained, the Great Wall was first built with rammed earth and was fortified with bricks and watchtowers a century later. Everything here looks very shabby, but they are authentic. That's the most precious thing. In my next video, I'll take you to another ancient town by the Yellow River in Shanxi Province. After Shanxi merchants built their business in Mongolia, they started to sell goods back from Mongolia to southern China. One way was through the Yellow River. This town by the Yellow River thrived as the result of transportation in the Yellow River. I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sites of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, and I'll continue with the story of Shanxi merchants.